souls like shrubs in the desert. Our hearts seek the ways of your spirit and the waters of life, but our footsteps lead us into arid desert sands. This is not your hope and plan for us. Forgive us. Turn us again to the healing you so freely offer and mend the brokenness of the lives and in our world. Amen. We hunger and God nourishes us with his word. We thirst and Christ provides us with living water. God looks at us in our brokenness and offers blessings to all who turn to the Lord. With the assurance of God's faithful love, choose this day to serve God in all that we do.
reading our scripture passages this week, I realized, I kind of noticed, that the first one, our Old Testament reading, comes from the very, very beginning of the Bible, the first chapter of the Bible. And it talks about how God created Earth, and it talks about the water on Earth. And then the New Testament passage comes from the very last chapter of the Bible, and guess what's in there? Water. He talks about a river in heaven. It's describing what heaven is like. And the, the passage talks about a river that runs from the throne of God through heaven. So I thought, well, I guess maybe we should talk about water. So our, our Revelation passage talks about a river. Why do you think rivers are important? Our life. What what happens? What what rivers do for us? That's right. They give us water. They have well, fish live in rivers. <coughs> Excuse me. So it gives our fish a home, and fish are important because they provide food for us and for animals and other animals. And the rivers give us water for the farmers to irrigate their crops which is also very important for everybody, right? <clears throat> and it gives drinking water for people and for animals and birds, right? So water is very important. I have, I have some interesting facts. Do you know that you can live for weeks or even months without food? Did you know that? We could live for, for weeks without eating anything. How long do you think you could live without water? About four days. And if you're outside and it's hot and you're sweating, even less than that. So water is very important, right? So we can't live without water. What else can't we live without? We can't live very long without Jesus. Water is very important to keeping our bodies strong and healthy. And Jesus is very important for keeping our spirit strong and healthy, right? So that's what I want us to think about this week, is that we need water. Water is very, very important for our bodies to stay healthy and strong. And we need Jesus. Jesus is the living water. And we need him just as much to keep our spirit healthy and strong. Right? All right. Will you pray with me today? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of water. And we ask that you remind us that just like our bodies need water to stay healthy and strong, our spirits need you to stay healthy and strong. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming, guys. Have a great week.
the snow. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning on the third day. Our New Testament reading today comes from Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the streets of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no lamp of light or sun. They need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. For the Lord... The God of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. See, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
draw water from the river. And then they must return, carrying that heavy bucket or container of water. And in those cultures, it is the women who bear the responsibility for this task. Water. It's everywhere. Over 70% of the earth is covered with it. Yet only about 3% of water is fresh water. And we don't even have access to that full 3%. The number is actually closer to about 1.2%. The rest is locked up in glaciers, permafrost, or deep underground. Water is everywhere. But usable, drinkable water is precious. There are many that believe that future wars will be fought over access to water. Water is essential to livestock, agriculture, power, and life. It may be everywhere, but its value is greater than that of the most precious gems. Water. It has no power. Yet it can give life and it can take it. It can carve out canyons. It can keep the mightiest ships afloat, or it can swallow them into its depths, never to be seen again. It can produce an almost endless food supply for a population, or become a lifeless void for years due to seemingly minuscule conditional variances. It can extinguish fire. It can cool nuclear reactors. Yet it is gentle enough for us to bathe our own children. In the very next chapter of Genesis we read, When no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no vegetation of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. And just a few verses later we read, A river flows out of Eden to water the garden. From there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Bishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Avila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Delium and Onyx are over there. The name of the second river is Bia, and the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. The creation story is flushed with water. God provided water for plants, trees, animals, and man. God created water for life. And as critical as this water would prove to be for the existence of life, it isn't the most critical. It is essential to life here on earth. But it is the living water, which we will first hear about in Jeremiah, that is essential to eternal life. Just as man needs to drink water in order to live, he also needs to drink of the living water. Without that living water, our souls are virtual deserts, a barren wasteland void of any sign of life. Without God, we wither and die. Soon after the creation story, man would demonstrate our nature, which is to resist God and look for ways around God's will so that we may seek our own. In the Garden of Eden, God created a home for man and Adam. Rivers of water flow from the garden to nourish all of creation. The water brought life to the garden and beyond. But it was drought that would be our downfall. The drought within our souls. You see, God had provided all that we could ever need. We had ample food as the trees in the garden provided abundant fruit. We were at peace and lived with heart and harmony with animals. And of course we had life-giving water. Unfortunately, we would soon encounter a being who hates all that God created. And sadly, our story would align with his in many ways. This being, whom we now know as Lucifer, was an angel. He was beautiful and brilliant. He was close to God and seemingly had anything any being could ever want. But he desired more because of his pride. As a result, he was cast out of heaven. And ever since, he has worked to oppose all that God does in any way that he can find. It was pride that led to his downfall. And it was our pride that would lead to 
our own. When the serpent spoke to Eve, he didn't appeal to her hunger or to her lust. He didn't, he didn't tempt her with riches. No, he simply used her pride. In Genesis 3, verse 4, we read, But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He told Eve that the forbidden fruit would make her like God. Now, he was cast out of heaven because he himself wanted to be like God. It was his pride that cost him everything and led to his fall. And it was our pride that cost us everything and led to our own fall. Just like Lucifer, we were close to God. We had everything we could ever want. We lived lives free of toil, free of pain, free of death. But it was our pride that would lead us to believe it wasn't enough. Our pride would create this desert in our souls that would make us thirst for more, even though we had all we would ever need. This desert within our souls still exists today. Even when we have all that we need, because of our fallen nature, we thirst for more. We want more. We yearn for more, even though God has provided so much. That desire for more, that pride, that desert within our souls would soon lead to more sin. The world became a hateful place full of violence and atrocities. It was so bad that God regretted creating mankind. And so he decides to wipe the world clean and start again. What does he use to cleanse the world of sin and evil? You guessed it. Water. The waters of the great flood would clear the world of evil so that we could begin anew and Noah, with Noah and his family. But of course, it wouldn't take long for this disease of sin to infect mankind yet again. And years later, God's people, the Israelites, were living as slaves in Egypt. God sends Moses to free them. Through Moses, God performs miracle after miracle, which included commanding the waters of the Red Sea to part so that they may safely escape. That same water that parted and free the Israelites would then destroy their captives who were pursuing them. But it wasn't much later when the Israelites quickly forgot all that God had done for them. He had freed them from slavery. He had provided all they needed to survive. Each morning, God provided food in the form of manna on the ground. He commanded them only to gather enough for each day. You see, God wanted them to learn to trust Him to provide. Now, did the Israelites obey that command? They did not. But the day old manna became infested with maggots, so they couldn't save it. Now, you would think that they would learn to trust in God to provide for them. But that's just not our nature. This desert within our souls causes us to always yearn for more than God provides. And so they continue to complain. At one point, God commands Moses to strike a rock. And when he did, out poured our old friend, cold, refreshing, life-giving water. Scripture is indeed flush with water. Throughout the Old Testament, we will continue to see water play a central role. It's in the great basin of the tabernacle, cleansing those who will enter into the presence of God. The Psalms celebrate God sending forth springs into the brooks and tell us of Him leading us by still waters. God would speak to Jeremiah and refer to Himself as the fountain of living water. And then along comes a man named Jesus whose story would so often include water. Christ came to John the Baptist, who baptized him with water. And next week, we will celebrate the sacrament of baptism here in our church, and we'll do it with water. When Jesus encountered the Samaritan woman at the well, he asked her for a drink of water. Jesus reminded her of our human nature in that story, as he told her that when she drinks of the water of that well, she will thirst again. But Jesus is living water, and one day, when sin and evil have been destroyed, we are no longer fallen or redeemed. Because of the living water, we shall never thirst again. But we aren't there yet. 
Jesus tells us in John chapter 3, verse 5, Very truly I tell you that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. The first miracle we hear of Jesus performing involves water, which he turned into wine. Jesus walked on water. Jesus called the waters of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 38, And let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Christ washed his disciples' feet with water. And on the day that he made the ultimate sacrifice and died a criminal's death for the sake of us all, when that Roman soldier pierced his side with a spear, outward blood and water. Water flows through the scriptures. From the rivers flowing out of Eden to those nourishing the tree of life in the new creation to come, God's word is wet, overflowing with water. And I think that that poses two challenges for us as the body of Christ, as his church. First, I believe that we must get wet. We must immerse ourselves in the living water and soak our very souls in his word. Next, and perhaps even more challenging, is how we thirst. Like Adam and Eve, like the Israelites, like every fallen man and woman before us, we thirst. We thirst for wealth. We thirst for power. We thirst for influence. We thirst for luxury, comfort, and all of the empty promises that this world tempts us with each day. We thirst for all of them because we forget that God is the source of all that is good and that He will provide. We must learn to trust God to do as He does. We must learn to collect our man and listen to what God is calling us to do and know beyond all doubt that He holds us in His hands. And we need not worry about tomorrow. Philippians chapter 6, verse 7. Say it aloud, one of my favorite verses. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. It's easier said than done. It requires overcoming our very fallen nature. But the message that God has given us through his word is this. Though we thirst, we need only come here to drink. Because indeed we can be nourished by his word. Our thirst can be quenched if only we will hear. Because like he and like the new creation, when it comes to scripture, when it comes to God's word, Truly, a river runs through it. Amen. Please rise as you're ready. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, please be with all of those who need your care. Please bring comfort to those who are sick, injured, or having other health concerns, be they visible or invisible. Today, we especially pray for those who do not have enough water. Be with those in countries such as Somalia, Zimbabwe, Senegal, Sudan, and all of the drought-stricken areas of the world. Please also be with those who do not have your living water, those who have not heard the good news of the gospel, and those who have heard but whose hearts have been hardened. Please let them hear. We pray that you will come into their lives and that they may experience your saving grace. Lord, please comfort all of those who need your loving care. We pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
service of worship, to the service of God's people near and far, refreshed by the living water that Jesus offers you. Listen for the parched voices of the least of these, search out the dry places in the arid souls, and become for them a spring of living water. As you go, may the blessing of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the spirit of grace be upon you this day and forever.